But once up, my name is Technobi here for Troubleshoot, and welcome back to another video. In this quick video, I'll be taking you through setting up and using your own image generation AI on your computer, using your own hardware, completely for free. There's no purchases, there's nothing like that. Previously, I've seen a couple of people showing off stable diffusion GUIs and things like that, that you have to pay for monthly. There's a really old version going around, and any updated versions, you need to go to the creator's Patreon. This is completely different. Stable Diffusion is an image creation AI that's available for free for absolutely everyone and it's completely open source. The UIs where you can type in numbers and drag sliders around are completely user made just to make life a bit easier so you don't have to type in tons of commands. However, because some of them exist and they look relatively pretty, they're good with marketing, they're able to sell their own UI. In this video, I'll be showing you a really great UI that's really powerful that you can set up completely for free on your PC with no extra dependencies, you don't need Python, Condo, or anything like that installed, it works out of the box. That being said, the Stable Diffusion GUI is a little bit smaller than this, as far as I understand, and this will take up roughly 16 gigabytes of drive space. On top of this, you also need an NVIDIA graphics card with 4 gigabytes of VRAM or more. It may work with AMD, but I'm not entirely sure. If you have a 1070 or anything above that, you probably are able to generate images, though you can try with any graphics card. It's worth a shot, and of course, you can lower the resolution to generate smaller images. Anyways, let's start at the very top. We'll be downloading and installing the Stable Diffusion UI, which you'll find linked in the description down below. This is the UI that I'm talking about. Essentially, it'll open up in your web browser, so you could technically open it on your phone, connected to your PC, etc. And you're able to simply just generate images by giving text prompts. Currently, there isn't image to image and things like that in here, though they have talked about updating to 1.5 of Stable Diffusion when that eventually comes out. So it's really active and it's a pretty good front end. Let's go ahead and download this. On the right hand side, you'll find releases. All we need to do is click the latest version over here. Then right below this, you'll find Stable Diffusion UI Win64 and the Linux version up here. If you'd like to use the Linux version under WSL or simply on a Linux PC, you can of course download and install that. But for me, I'll be downloading the Windows Zip over here, which you will likely be doing as well. Now that it's done, I can open it up and I'll need to extract everything from this zip here into a folder, probably on your C drive. The developers say simply drag this folder into the root of your C drive so you can go C Stable Diffusion UI and you'll have all of these files here. Just a quick note, if you are installing this on a Windows PC, make absolutely sure that you do not close the installer while it is started. It'll download around about 12 to 16 gigabytes of files, so make sure you leave it going. In my case, I closed it and for some reason I'm not able to run it under Windows, though it seems to install just fine on other PCs. I'm sure I have to delete something or reset something. Maybe it's because I have Python and things installed already and packages half installed or who knows. Just make sure you don't close it after you run it. That is until it's fully booted up. Then you can close it whenever you want. So for that reason, I'll be firing up a sandbox just to show you what the installation process is like. It's really simple. After the files are downloaded, open a new file browser and head across to your C drive. Then inside of here, we'll be opening the Stable Diffusion zip and simply dragging it from one to the other like such. Now it'll extract 20,000 odd files. There we go. Once it's done, we can close the zip, head back to our C drive, then Stable Diffusion UI. And all we have to do is open Stable Diffusion UI dot bat. I think it is, or maybe dot CMD. Regardless, it'll open in a window like this and start downloading immediately. All we need to do is leave this open. You can tap out and do other things on your computer. Just make sure you don't close this window here until the installation process is done. This is one of the two ways of doing it. If you have the Windows subsystem for Linux installed with maybe Ubuntu, Kali or anything like that, you can install it there as well. And personally, I just prefer to run it from something like that. Though it runs exactly the same. Anyways, I'll sit around here and wait for the download to finish. A quick side note, some of these packages will seem like they're hanging at the very end, especially the CUDA download, which is around 500 megs, and the PyTorch download, which is around a gig and a half, or 1.2 gigs. It'll sort of stick around the end and hang there for a bit. Just wait for it to finish. It will eventually progress. Then it'll set up Conda automatically for you, which is the Python environment, hugging face, and everything else. Then it'll download and install some more packages. Then it'll start some even bigger downloads, the first being a 4 gigabyte stable diffusion weights, then a 300 meg GFP GAN face correction, ESR GAN for resolution upscaling, 
which is rather small, and then it'll launch up simple as that. All you want to do is click allow here for both of these, then allow access and yes if prompted for admin. And just like that, the stable diffusion UI should open up and you shouldn't get any errors. I'm getting errors here as I'm within a virtual machine. So tabbing back into my main PC, I've got it set up under the WSL in Ubuntu. This doesn't really matter. At this point, you've set everything up for Windows, but if you'd like to set it up under the WSL instead, or you're having issues with the Windows installation, simply fire up an Ubuntu terminal. I'm using 2204 here, and we'll CD into our home directory. Then we'll have a look at the Stable Diffusion UI GitHub, once again releases, and we'll right-click the Stable Diffusion UI Linux tar.xz here, and copy link address. Now, inside of Linux, we can simply wget space followed by the link and hit enter to download the file. I'm getting a DNS error here, so I'll just nano etsyresolve.conf, or rather sudo nano, set the name server to Google, save, close, and run the download command once more. Then it'll connect and download the tarxf file, then I can clear and ls. You can see the stable diffusion UI tarxz file here. All we need to do is tar space tac xf space the name of the file. In this case, stable diffusion UI linux tar.xz. I won't be extracting this as I already have. All we need to do then is cd into stable diffusion UI. So cd stable diffusion UI. And just like that, we have the project files here with all of the necessary permissions. Start.sh is in green, meaning we can run it. All we need to do from here is dot slash start dot sh and upon hitting enter, it'll run. If you'd like to get a nice one liner to change directory into this folder and run the script, it's over here. You'll find it in the description down below. So I'll hit enter. And just like that, it'll check for updates, download anything different if there is an update ready, and it'll simply fire stable diffusion just like that. If I open up my task manager here, you can see I've got quite a bit of load of my GPU for some reason. Oh yes, I am recording. Right, well. I'll put this over to the side and you can see it's open here. All we need to do is navigate across to 127001 colon 9000. As it is here, this is four O's, but we're going to 127001 or simply localhost. So navigating to localhost colon 9000, we see this here. Stable diffusion is starting and looking back at the window here, scrolling down, it is loading some things here now that we've gone to this website. So it's loading the checkpoint over here and you should see your VRAM slowly increase. So pulling it back up to the center, there's already a prompt here, a photograph of an astronaut riding a horse. All we need to do is click make image, or at least wait for it to start. This will go green and then we can make the image. There we go, it's loading and because we clicked the button, it should automatically start, maybe, no, right, make image. Now it'll start generating. If we head into the console that we have open, you can see some things are happening here and you can see the window slowly progressing into an astronaut riding a horse, exactly as we had asked it. When it's eventually done, it'll send the full resolution image to our browser. And in just a moment, we'll be able to hover over the image and download it as simple as that. Right, so there's a couple of things that I have to say about this. It's incredibly simple and incredibly powerful. They give you all of the options that you would ever need in this corner over here, as well as some sample modifiers down here, which help you pick exactly what you want. Drawing styles, visual styles, artists, CGI software, etc. These are all important modifiers that you can add, but essentially just toggling something on here adds an image. And at the very end of our command, it'll simply add comma followed by a sketch or whatever you have selected. So you don't need to use this section at all. It's there just to simplify things. Something I would absolutely recommend is using settings in the top right and automatically save to followed by a folder path here. In my case, I've set it to my different drive over here, AAI followed by SDUI, Stable Diffusion UI. If you're running Windows, you can simply enter C colon slash whatever or wherever you want to save it on Ubuntu WSL you should add slash MNT, which is mount, followed by a drive letter, in my case A, though it could be C, slash, whatever, whatever, and it'll drop files onto your Windows PC when it's done. That way, whenever we generate images, we don't have to think about saving it. It'll save it into this folder here, as well as a text document explaining exactly how we got here. Our prompt, keywords, etc., everything like that. I would recommend having turbo mode turned on, as well as play a sound on task completion, just so you know when things are done. Then on the left hand side, let's look at image settings. We can set a seed here for which you can untick random image and hover over your images here to copy seeds that you've already used. In this case, 8578996, I can copy paste it into here. And when I make image, I'll get the exact same image out, assuming all of my other settings are exactly the same. Super simple. 
I'd recommend having this turned on just so you get a different image every time. It's got nothing to do with your seed. Then we get to some pretty cool options that other programs don't seem to offer you at all. We can make multiple images and multiple images at once using more of our GPU, especially important if you have a powerful GPU. In my case, I have a 3080 Ti and I can comfortably generate two to three images at once. So I'll generate two images in parallel and I'll make a total of four images. This way it'll generate two images, then two more images when it's done. And just like that, I'll have four images. Underneath it, we can choose a sampler. In this case, PLMS is the default. I don't really see a difference between them, but there's the option here. Image size, this is also incredibly powerful. We can choose any of these options here. The ones with stars next to them are recommended. Usually leave it at 512, 512, though you can make it 512 by 768 or 1024 for a vertical image or 1024 by 512 for a horizontal image. Super simple. Number of inference steps, guidance scale, and options that you'll find over here all have to do with the AI and its generation. You can mess around with these, though I don't completely understand them, so I'm not going to pretend like I know what they do here. Right below this, we have render settings. I'd recommend having show a live preview of the image turned on. That way we can see things as they start to be processed and eventually when we can see them fully. You can easily pull out or cancel it if you think things are going horribly, like say generating a face. Then fix incorrect faces and eyes. This builds into what I had previously mentioned. If we turn this on, whenever we're trying to generate a photorealistic human or something like that, it'll generate eyes that look really good and it'll replace broken eyes that don't look good at all. I'll try generating a face in just a moment. Upscaling the image, I'd recommend having this turned on and I have it set to X4+. Plus. Though if you're generating cartoons, anime and things like that, use the anime option over here. Then we can show only the corrected or upscaled image. I don't have this on. Right, with all of these settings set up here, I'll be generating four images, two at a time, 512 by 512, and I'll be upscaling it to four times the resolution using this setting here. Let's generate a face. So a beautiful smiling in deep space with stars and a sun, comma, solar flare. And just for some added flare, we'll say art by Greg. Ritkowski. You'll find this absolutely everywhere. It's just an art style. Anyways, with a basic prompt written out, make image, you'll see that my GPU gets hit pretty hard as I'm generating two images at once. There we go. Pretty high usage. Quite a bit of GPU being used here, probably around four or five gigabytes or so. You'll eventually reach a point at the very end of its processing cycle where it pauses and it upscales and tries to fix things. If I head across to the window here, you'll see it reaches all the way to the end, then applies filters and it ticks through to the next option. On the left over here, we have the original image, 512 by 512, and on the right, the upscaled image, as well as any corrections, such as fixing incorrect faces and eyes here. As you can see with this image here, I'll open both of these in new tabs, or rather download this one. You can see this face is absolutely horrifying. If I open up the image here with things corrected, you can see the face is a lot more pleasant to look at. It works really well, though mainly for artsy or cell shaded realistic sort of looking images. The teeth are still absolutely horrifying, but regardless, Faces and hands should be getting better in Stable Diffusion 1.5. This is 1.4 currently. Let's say you want to save one of them. Simply click Download next to the upscaled image. If you like how something looks, we can click Use as Input. I recommend using the smaller image here, as using too big will eat a lot of VRAM. Now you can see we have the image selected here. We can also choose any image of our PC to base the artwork off of here. Then I'll click Make Image you'll see that it does nothing for quite some time as it's loading a whole bunch of things. It's reloading the model as well, I'm pretty sure. And eventually it'll start processing. So here we go. It's running through 25%, 35, 50, 75, 95, upscaling and 100%. It seems to skip the last preview image. That's not too much of an issue. You can see here, these have definitely been inspired by what we gave it to dream on. Of course, if we change up the prompt, things will look very different. It'll base it roughly off of shapes, colors, objects, etc. It's an AI, but it does pretty much what it wants. I'll let these other two generate down here. There we go. There's a very happy lady there. And another goofy looking one at the very bottom. I do like this third last one. Download. So as you can see over here, if I open this one up, zoom into it, the face looks oddly human or rather realistic compared to the cartoony drawing that we have here. It really doesn't fit in. 
That's where this fix incorrect faces and eyes option comes in. If I look at the original image over here, you'll see that the eyes fit in a little bit better. They're not so realistic. It's more in the same art style. You may want to have this option off either for some faces if you'd like the way that they look originally. Speaking of, let's regenerate this. I'll take the seed, copy it, paste it into here, and I'll generate only one image as I'm generating this one here. Then I'll turn off fix incorrect faces and eyes and keeping everything else exactly the same, I'll make one image. Then after roughly four to six seconds, we'll have the exact same image because it was generated with the same settings. And this time it's not so horrifying when we zoom into the face as it hasn't been replaced or at least a little bit less horrifying. I'll switch back to four in groups of two and I'll turn fixing faces back on. Let's have a look at in painting, the option over here. Essentially, we can replace objects in the image by simply painting over them with the brush tool and choosing to replace them. I'll replace the sun over here that she's holding and for the prompt, I'll write in say blue soccer ball. I'll click make image and we'll see exactly what the AI does. If we play around with the guidance scale and prompt strength over here, you'll see that the output image varies drastically. I don't completely understand what it does, but with some tweaking, you can definitely get pretty much what you want. Well, I'm not seeing much blue here. It seems like it's just made a blurry ball for the most part. Anyways, you sort of understand what I'm trying to do here. For some things it works, some things it doesn't. Maybe I'll try to replace the whole background. So painting in the entire background, or at least roughly doing that, I'll say maybe wheat field. And we're pretty much where we started. I'm not too sure what's changed here. I guess there's the start of a field here, but sort of the bottom half. I'm not too sure. Regardless, I haven't really been able to get this feature to work. It's a in beta feature after all, but you can definitely try and fine tune it and get it working for you. Regardless, now that we've generated a few images, we can open up the same folder we set to automatically save images into by heading across to it. On Windows, once again, using WSL, I've set it to A drive AI SDUI for me. Heading across to that folder, you'll see a bunch of different times, I think they are, and we'll open up the latest one. This is where all of my images are stored that we've just generated, including a text file with the prompts and settings that we use to get there. So I can open up both the upscaled image and the original image simply by looking at the size difference down here and the title. So doing it this way, I would definitely recommend as you can save images that you possibly skip over, forget about, or want to return to later you keep absolutely everything that you generate. That being said, just generating a handful of images here, right-click properties, how about around 100 megabytes? These can get very big very quickly. Simply come in here once in a while and delete every image or every image that you don't want. I'd say take the ones you want to keep out of this folder and keep them somewhere safe. Regardless, it's a really useful, really powerful tool, and this is just getting started. These image tools have only just got to us very recently. That being said, things like Midjourney and other programs are invite only, require you to pay and things like that. This is absolutely free. There's no credits. You simply use your own PC and your own electricity to generate images using your own hardware. That being said, there's no filters of any kind. You can generate literally anything. As good or as bad as that is, just be warned that it can and will easily create NSFW content even accidentally. So be very careful with what you put into the prompt field, especially if you're going to be live streaming this or anything like that. Regardless, that's about it for this quick video. In the top right, you'll find a help and community section for GitHub and of course the source code. And in the description down below, please do join my Discord. I'm incredibly interested in seeing what you generate, hearing about your prompts and experiences using Stable Diffusion UI. On top of that, subscribe as I'll have another video coming out on a different UI solution for Stable Diffusion that's a bit more complicated. This is definitely more user or beginner friendly. That's also based on a web UI. Anyways, thank you all for watching. My name's been Technobe here for Troubleshoot, and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.